Hello everybody, this is Faith from Any Me, Me Thrifter, and today I'm going to show you how I wrap breakables. So let's get right to it. Alrighty, so um, I saw, I noticed on some other people's YouTube channels where people were asking, can you please ship, make a video about how you ship um, breakables? So I do not know if those other channels are going to be making a video about this, but I thought I would show you my, my way of shipping. So um, today I've got these little, these are just little bitty um, like bread or salad plates. They have not sold, but I just listed them. So they're available in my store, just real cute, small plates. Although one does have a chip in it, kind of just depressing, but I had three, I'm just gonna go ahead and list them. Anyhow, so um, I'm gonna point the camera down here and try and show you what I do, and uh, hopefully it'll go well. All righty, so I've already got the box picked out. I always make sure that it's got plenty of space. I don't want it when I'm trying to find a box, I don't want it to be already pressing up against the edges. So this has got space on all sides. And uh, I always take paper, craft paper or whatever, and um, place them in the bottom of the box. That helps with, of course, void fill and it helps padding uh, for it as well. And I always, Take some bubble wrap and uh, place it in the bottom on top of the paper. And then, move it out the way. And you do, I do use a lot of um, bubble wrap when I'm wrapping breakables. But, so far, fingers crossed, knock on wood, whatever you need to do, I have not, I've only had one item break for shipping. So, very happy about that. Now, this one, always wrap it completely. And then I'm going to turn it sideways and wrap it again. And normally I would tape them. So, I wrap each item twice. Like I said, I normally would tape them just to keep them and keep the folded ends there to help protect the side. So I'd probably tape that as well. And um, for this instance, since I'm not actually having to ship this side, these items, I'm only gonna show you what I do with the, I'll just use the one plate. So we would have the plates inside then I'd grab more bubble wrap and then maybe it's overkill, I don't know. Then I'll actually place another piece of bubble wrap on top before I place the next wrapped plate. Okay, so after you got all three plates inside, then I get more bubble wrap and depending on how thick or how much space is between the plate and the box. I may fold it, here this is a 12 by 12 square, fold it in half and then half again. Sometimes I only stop here depending, but um, I'm gonna try and fold it again and I slide them down. I like for it to be slightly under the plate and coming up the side. And sometimes I have to remove the plates to put this in, or some of the plates to put this in and then put the plates back in. So then I have another one. Now if it gets too thick and I feel like um, that the holding on that much is too much pressure on the plates, I'll take them out uh, and I'll just do the folding twice. And if it's a, a bigger stack and I feel like that isn't tall enough, 
you know, if it was a bigger box and a bigger stack of plates, that if I felt like this wasn't tall enough, then I would just add more. Okay, so you can see all four sides have the folded plastic or the folded bubble wrap. So a P, the paper, a folded bubble wrap, the plate folded with actually four pieces of bubble wrap, and that would be for each plate, a piece of bubble wrap on the edges slightly under the plate, and then I would add, like I said before, there would be another bubble wrap and the plate and the next wrap plate. So, excuse me, uh, when I get to the top of my pile, I would take another bubble, place it on the top, just like the one under the bottom, and fill it with paper. Now, if I look down in here and I see that there's space and I fear that they could move, I might add more bubbles in here. I would just stuff them down in these sides. That way, you know, if a corner gets crushed, they still have that protection. So I would just take more bubbles, fold it up, and shove it down in that corner. But I always make sure that it's paper, bubbles, then the item, bubbles around the sides and any void fill if you feel it's necessary, and sometimes I do, bubbles and then more paper. And then once I'm done and I tape up the box, I grab my box and I shake it. And if I feel any movement, and sometimes I don't tape it just like I just did there, and if I feel movement in any direction, I'm going to take it back and figure out what I can do to make it where it does not shift. Now, I have heard that some sellers will actually double box it. So I guess they, which I don't do, but I guess after they get it, the item boxed up and taped, they actually add it to another box. I'm not sure exactly how they do that. I don't know if they add have a space to add like void fill between each box or if they just put another box that's tight around this box. I am not sure about that. I've never seen that type of, you know, packing before. So, um, okay. Alrighty. It's actually a different day and, um, I wanted to add something to this video, so I'm just gonna squeeze it in somewhere. But if you have something like a cup or a bowl or a big dish that has a void like this, so you can't, don't just wrap the item up. Sorry if my camera, I'm trying to hold it with my hand. Be sure to fill the item with bubbles or paper you want to fill that void space. Alrighty, so I guess that's it for my tutorial in how to ship breakables. Now, I mean, you can just take any of the concepts that whether it's an odd shaped, like a vase, I still did the same procedure. Paper, um, and not just a layer. I mean, you know, you saw it was a wadded up bunch of paper at the bottom, then bubbles and then I wrap the mess out of the item itself, wrap it twice, tape it so the bubbles don't come off, which may be paranoia, but I don't know how I do it. <laughs> and then um, bubbles around all the edges. You don't want it to be able to move in the box. You want sh to make sure that it is completely surrounded by the, the safety of the bubbles. The bubbles. And then more bubbles on top and then more paper. Just don't forget the void field. Any spaces is, spaces is not necessarily a good thing. I know it does add, it, it adds up on your shipping as far as the weight of it and all, but 
it like I said, I've only lost one item and it was actually, I had actually shipped, I'm gonna say two or three, maybe four items in that box that day and they were not flat items like plates. These were different shaped items um, like uh, lasagna dishes and such like that, casserole dishes and um, the lady lost only one item out of that box and so I felt really good that I only lost one item. I did refund her for that one item. Um, so, so far so good on how I've been packing them. And so um, if you have any questions about my procedure, please let me know, pop them in the comments down below. And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. I did notice last night that 83% of people that watch my videos, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of subscribers or, but 83% are not subscribers at all. So please consider subscribing if you like my content. And um, welcome to all the new subscribers. I really do appreciate it. And welcome back to all my uh, previous subscribers. So uh, hit that like button, maybe that bell button, get notifications when I do upload a new video. I'm gonna try and start I haven't sat down and made a schedule yet, but I would really like to make at least two, maybe three videos a week. We'll just have to see. Um, I do want to sit down and make a schedule for myself so I can just make myself, uh, you know, I think if I'd be better at getting those videos out, if I have that, that schedule, it, was, it would sort of push me to make sure I get them out there. So um, everyone, Y'all go out and make yourself proud and have a great day. Bye-bye.